Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thanks so much for joining me. As you can see from that rather elegant intro, we're talking about a Norwegian Corvette today. I absolutely love the look of this ship and this is something I really do feel Canada should really procure. But before we get into today's video, what is your favorite littoral ship, coastal ship? I'd love to hear in the comment section below your own ship, or maybe just your favorite naval warfare ship in general. So let's take a look at this vessel. Uh, it's not just about it being all sleek and stealthy looking, because it does look like a very sexy ship, uh, but it does represent a really unique approach to Norwegian's modern naval designs, and the Skold class is what we're looking at today. It's a missile fast patrol boat. And in typical Norwegian style, it is a fascinating mix of simplicity and innovation. And though it doesn't really carry the intimidating bulk of larger warships, it's designed with a purpose. Speed, stealth, efficiency in challenging environments, and Norway certainly has some of the most challenging coastal waters in the world. Norway's coastal geography is pretty rugged. It's a network of islands, fjords, and shallow waters, and they need to conduct covert and versatile operations in these waters. The Skoll class has its origins in the late 20th century, born out of Norway's need for fast, agile vessels capable of operating in shallow water environments. The prototype vessel, the K&M Skoll P960, was commissioned in April 1999. Designed as a testbed for advanced technologies, it underwent rigorous trials and several modifications before setting the standard for the series. Following the success of the prototype, the Norwegian government approved the construction of five additional ships in 2002. Built by Yume Mandel Shipyard, these vessels, the Storm P961, the Scud P962, the Steel P963, and the Glimped P964, and finally the Ginst P965, were delivered between 2010 and 2012, solidifying the class as a cornerstone of Norway's naval defense strategy. K&M Skold's deployment to the United States in 2002 marked a pretty good pivotal moment for the ship in its history. For over 13 months, the US Navy studied its capabilities as part of their Littoral Combat Ship or LCS development program. This bilateral collaboration included extensive naval exercises and research trials conducted by NAVSEA and the Office of Naval Research, demonstrating the Schultz class ability to be for a potential integration into the broader naval strategies. The ship embodies a design philosophy focused specifically on speed, stealth and versatility. It has an air-cushioned catamaran or ACC hull, something that is totally unique and I find quite innovative for a ship of this kind. This is basically a refined form of surface effect ship or CES technology. This minimizes hull drag into the water and ensures shock resistance, particularly on shallow coastal waters which get pretty choppy sometimes. This design enables the vessels to achieve speeds exceeding 55 knots or 100 kilometers an hour, making them among the fastest naval craft in their class globally. The ACC hull designs a pressurized air cushion between two rigid sidewalls, drastically reducing the wetted surface area and wave resistance. This configuration allows the Skull class to operate in very shallow waters with drafts as low as 0.9 meters on the cushion, extending up to 2.3 meters when not. The hull is constructed from composite laminates of glass fiber, carbon fiber, and vinyl ester resins. These materials provide an optimal balance of strength, durability, and weight reduction. There are also radar absorbent materials, or RAM, which are integrated into the structural framework, enhancing the ship's stealth without adding a huge amount of weight for external RAM cladding. The vessel's faceted design eliminates also reflective right angles, as you can see in its stealthy zigzag style shapes, while flush mounted hatches and doors and windows contribute to its low radar signatures. The Skull class propulsion has evolved from its initial Kodag or combined diesel and gas configuration to the more advanced Kogag or combined gas and gas system used in production models. This system features four Pratt and Whitney gas turbines, two ST18M rated at 4,000 kilowatt each, and two ST40M rated at 2,000 kilowatt each. These turbines drive two Akamuya water jets, delivering extraordinary speed and agility. Auxiliary engines such as the MTU6R183T52 complement this propulsion system. 
The lift fan engines maintain the air cushion while the VT Maritime Dynamics ride control system regulates the air pressure for optimal stability and performance. The vessel's advanced maneuverability allows it to execute sharp turns and lateral movements, allowing it to potentially evade enemy fire and navigate some of the coastal complex terrains. Stealth though is certainly a defining feature of the Skull class. It designs minimalistic visual, radar and magnetic signatures making it exceptionally difficult to detect. Some of the key stealth features include the RAM integrated hull structure, the flush mounted features but also the faceted profile. This is the angular profile and paintwork that is even placed to diffuse those radar waves. This is a big factor for survivability. The vessels incorporate these redundant systems and the shallow draft minimizing vulnerability to mines and even underwater debris. Vital systems are configured to continue operation even after sustaining significant damage, ensuring mission continuity. With a modular platform, if something is damaged, something can quite quickly be repaired and changed out on the ship to get back onto the waves and back into the fight. The Skull class is armed with state-of-the-art weaponry designed for a range of combat scenarios. Some of the key systems include the Konsberg Naval Strike Missile. These precision-guided missiles have a range exceeding 150 kilometers and utilize GPS and infrared seekers for pinpoint accuracy. Their compact design and high lethality make them really good for engaging maritime and land-based targets. This is a big key winning factor for this ship because if you can engage both ship and land-based targets, that's a big game changer for a coastal ship. There is also the MBDA Mistral surface-to-air missile deployed in portable twin launchers. These infrared guided missiles provide short range air defense with a target range of up to 4 kilometers. And some of you are probably wondering, well, 4 kilometers isn't a lot of, you know, distance to be covering for short range air defense. For a ship of this kind, they tend to not just operate on their own. They're normally in a little flotilla of about 4 or 5 of these ships, and they are going to have a big network with 4 kilometer coverage within their own little flotilla because their firing range circles are going to intersect and overlap with one another, making a bigger network of coverage. But of course, the most obvious and coolest weapon system on this ship is the Otto Malara 76mm Super Rapid Gun. This naval gun fires 6kg shells at a rate of 120 rounds per minute with a range of up to 16km, and it is effective against both aerial and surface threats. This is key for a ship of this kind, and it hosts up to around 3,000 rounds inside of that ship, which is uh, a lot of ammunition if required. Fire control is managed by the Saab Seros 200 system, which integrates a KU-bound radar, thermal imaging, laser range finding, and CCTV. The vessels also feature the Thales MRR 3DNG radar, capable of detecting targets at ranges of up to 180 km in air surveillance mode and 140 km in surface mode. Its electronic warfare suite ensures survivability even in some of the most high threat environments. Notable systems include the Rheinmetall mass decoy system, capable of deploying omni-spectral decoys to counter radar, infrared and laser guided threats. The EDO CS3701 tactical radar surveillance system, which provides electrical support countermeasures and radar warning receivers with functions for 360 degree situational awareness. And the Termoscanta 6000 radar, integrated during recent upgrades, these radars enhance small target detection like drones, helicopter guidance, and tracking capabilities under all weather conditions. When the ship is put to sea, it's been doing pretty well for itself. During NATO exercises and joint operations, the Skull class has demonstrated its ability to really integrate very easily into other multinational naval strategies and naval fleets. Its deployment to the United States really kind of underscores the potential for it to be adaptable across different diverse operational theaters, and there's been some discussion about whether or not this ship can be upgraded to actually create larger anti-ship missile threats uh, and be somewhat of even like a long-range torpedo boat. Um, but at the moment, it's primarily designed for littoral operations and staying by the coastline. With a crew of just 16, including two to four officers, the Skull class is fairly automated, reducing the manpower requirements. Advanced systems handle critical functions, allowing the crew to focus on mission objectives. We see this quite common now, even in tanks, as I mentioned in the Leopard 2 ARC 3.0. Even AI is being utilized to try and minimize the amount of workload that the crew has to do. You have less crew on the ship, you can expand the space needed uh, for berths and living quarters for other things that you may need, for instance, weapons, technology, fuel. 
and this limited vessel size can restrict a little bit of our operational endurance to approximately about a week without resupply, but in all honesty, when you're staying along the coastline, who would you need to go longer than a week? I mean, it's going to be able to lock into ports, harbors to resupply pretty quickly. And the Norwegian Navy has taken some extensive modification and modernization efforts to extend the Skull class's operational lifespan. They've been pushing in a lot of advanced composite materials, replacing some of the older laminates with high-strength lightweight composites, and creating an enhanced electronic suite with integration of next-generation radar, communications, and combat management systems. And the success of the Skull class has really inspired a number of developments, and two of them are new classes of service effect vessels. These include a smaller design with improved missile defenses and a larger heavy corvette variant, both aimed at addressing emerging threats while preserving the core advantages of speed, stealth, and firepower. The Skull class represents a paradigm shift in naval design, though, blending that technology with more of an operational profile tailored to modern threats around the Norwegian coast. So there you have it, that's the Skull class missile fast patrol boat in a nutshell, and it's not the flashiest or the most heavily armed vessel out there, but it does have a lot going for it, especially when it comes to its stealthy design, and of course to adapt for Norway's requirements, which is as I had mentioned many times a coastal water defence. I really respect though it's simple, fairly functional approach, and it's not trying to be more than it needs to be. Uh, sometimes we see ships that are just pumped full of weapon systems and equipment that that's really not what it was designed for. It was meant to be uh, supporting a coastline instead of rolling out into international waters and knocking out you know, aircraft carriers. Uh, it's sometimes really all that needs to be done is something simple and that does exactly what it asks to do. But what do you think? Is this kind of minimalist, stealthy design the way forward for modern navies, or do you think it's a little too specialized? Should it be needed for wider use? Let me know in the comments section. I always enjoy reading what you all have to say. Trust me, I am checking out your comments. I'm not ignoring them. I love reading your comments when I'm just chilling out. If you want to support me in any way, you can check out the description box below. My Patreon and my PayPal is on there. And of course, if you want to actually uh, subscribe fully to the channel and become a member, you can do so as well. And thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on PayPal and Patreon. It means so much to me. Um, if you found this interesting and learned something new, feel free to give me a like and consider subscribing and clicking the bell for more videos on military check and vehicles. Until next time, take care and stay curious. Bye-bye.